Live from Orlando, Florida, you're listening to the Orlando Magic HQ podcast, the voice of Magic fans. Join us every week for a unique fan perspective on all of the latest Magic news and updates. The show starts now. What's up, Magic fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Orlando Magic HQ podcast brought to you by the Believe Podcast Network and Bent Online. We're your hosts, Al, myself, Anthony. Today is Friday, March 15th. And in today's episode, we are talking Clay Thompson to the Magic, or so there, was, there might have been a chance during the trade deadline. We're going to be talking about Coach Mose and his extension and the return of Jalen Suggs. But before we get into um, those topics, quick word from our sponsors, Bet Online continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. With up-to-the-minute odds, stats, and trends, you can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in-game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or your mobile device. Head to Online today to become part of the team and remember to use promo code promo code believe for your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit bell online the game starts here also a quick shout out to our new sponsors cut the social betting app um they're they're our new sponsor we've talked about already a couple times on uh, the last few episodes this is an app that allows you to be able to bet with your friends and you can bet with them on anything sports politics who can run the fastest that this is exactly what Cut allows you to do is peer to peer social betting platform that's legal in forty plus states. Cut has customizable odds tracking capabilities, an entire social network with group chats, user profiles, and rewards. All payments, no need for Venmo. Use our promo code Believe for a ten percent welcome deposit bonus. Um, don't forget to use that promo code if you use it. It's awesome because, again, there's a lot of betting apps out there, but this is the one that allows you to customize it to be able to bet on whatever it is that you need. Um, and then also we spoke about Brandon Kravitz from 96.9 The Game, um, who just joined the Believe Podcast Network. If you're looking for more Orlando sports content, not just uh, in regards to Orlando Magic, we know that a lot of locals, they are fans of UCF, of Orlando City. Um, and in any of the top stories in Central Florida that sports fans care about, check out the Zone Heads Orlando podcast. Brennan Kravitz and his crews are dropping four episodes per week. And it's awesome because uh, we've had um, Stephen Cameron from our close up uh, uh, magic podcast where he's been joining uh, Brandon Kravitz on 96 and 9 the game every Wednesday, uh, sometime between four and five. So. Uh, great Orlando Magic HQ representation out there in the radio world as well. So really, really good stuff. Make sure you check them out. And now that we got the the some of the ads um, out of the way, Al, what's up, man? How are you? What's going on, man? I know we have to get through the the ad reads there for yeah, the, the week. important stuff. Um, the important yeah, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> well, pays the bills. Um, doing good, man. Doing good. It wasn't uh, the week that we expected, and we'll talk about that more here in the episode as we goes on, but um doing good how about you man well how, how are things on your end good 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 man as we get closer and closer game by game the the season is coming very very close to an end and it's been uh it's been a little bit of a roller coaster ride man if you really think back of how the season has been a lot of highs a lot of lows um there there's moments where we're happy there's moments that we're frustrated uh this this season has been has been a lot to be um proud of but because we have so much um, passion, because we have so much love, because we have so much expectation for this team, I feel like our emotions have been really, really on a big, big roller coaster. And and, and I feel like this week was like a perfect week to kind of sum that up, right? We we lose against the New York Knicks. This is a, our, our first game without Jalen Suggs. And then we lose against the Pacers, uh, 111-97. Again, no, no Jalen Suggs, no Markel Fultz. And then we get Jalen Suggs back. We play against those pesky Brooklyn Nets that they 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 kind of put a whoop into us, um, you know the, our our first two showings and then the last the last two man we were able to match that series up um, and kind of let them know that you know we're we're a really good basketball team man and and for whatever reason Macau Bridges had our number in the beginning of the season not not so much towards the back end so um, let, let's talk about that first I mean two flat performances. 
for the Magic without Jalen Suggs. We magically get, no pun intended, Jalen Suggs back into the lineup, and the Magic end up playing the way that we're used to and expect them to play. Um, when it when you see things like that happen, do you do you feel like Jalen Suggs deserve way more credit than what we originally thought when it comes to his importance uh, to this team? I think without a doubt, right? So the fact that he is now one of our best shooters, I think it's an added element to our team that we just didn't have before. We didn't have that expectation on him in the past. But now going forward, you miss it. Like we saw it this week when we didn't have him out there in the starting lineup. It felt off. It felt like the offense wasn't flowing as well. And, and you miss that guy that can kick the ball out to hit that, that open three. And just yesterday, he, he came back he, against the Nets, hit three three-pointers in the first quarter. So right away, ma- making his presence felt. And of course, that is not considering the fact that what he brings on the defensive end as well, which is something that you cannot put enough words into what he does on the defensive end. He's such an impactful defender. I think of him as J.I. Uh, it's against bigs. He is against guards. Like, he just puts that pressure on guys, that ball pressure. He pushes the tempo. Um, such a difference maker. And, again, it's truly all happening this season. Like, I know in years past we saw glimpses of it. This year's kind of all come together. He's been healthy. He's improved as a shooter. He's scoring in different ways. He's finishing better at the basket. And he's still bringing it on the defensive end. So, in my opinion, it cannot be denied the impact that he has. Um it's unfortunate that we didn't see him against the Knicks and against the Pacers because, again, those two games meant a lot to us in the standings. It meant a lot to us in the playoff race. Um, and we just didn't look like the magic that we have seen for the past month or so. Um, so that's my take on Jalen. Let, let me ask you, what were your thoughts initially on that weekend series against the Knicks and the Pacers? After coming up those two losses, what were you thinking about the team, where we're headed, I saw people on social media saying, oh, we're not ready. This is what we're going to be seeing in the playoffs. We're going to be getting spanked, and this is what we're going to see a lot of in the first round. Were those your thoughts, or, or what were you thinking? Yeah, I mean, the the manager were just coming off of, you know, a, 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 a league-leading uh, uh, games where we were, we were, we were win- winning streak, right? We were winning a lot of games. So I felt like the Magic were, were due for one. I think the part that's a little upsetting or, or kind of upset a lot of uh, you know, people in the fan base is the fact that they were really expecting that that Knicks game to go our way. They didn't have Julius Randle. They didn't have OG. They, they didn't have a lot of their their big pieces. So, you know, on paper, you're expecting for us to win that game. Jalen Brunson, we, we didn't know whether or not he was going to play. We didn't think he was. He was a last-minute add-in, a game-time decision, ended up playing and ended up going off, man. It's as simple as that. So you take a look at the last two games that we lost, we lose against the Knicks, who the Knicks, who they're they're, you know they're they're led by a very offensive driven point guard in Jalen Brunson. Then you look at Indiana Pacers, the same thing you can say about Tyrese Halliburton. So you don't have Jalen Suggs, who's a pesk on the defensive end when it when it comes to these guards. And the Magic are they, we're we're just going to struggle. It, it it is what it is. You go against you know Brooklyn. Obviously their their main guy is is Mikael Bridges. So. Um, you know, you, you bring Jalen Suggs back in there and he just brings a different dynamic. I, I love the fact that we have him in our start. I don't, I don't think that there's anyone that can take that point guard position from him at this very moment. I really like seeing him there. Is he the greatest point guard, um, you know, in the NBA? Of course not. Absolutely not. There's, there's still work to be done, but defensively, man, I, I like our odds with him there. This is somebody that is energetic. He's going to give his um, absolute all. His his three point shot is is respectable. Um, you know we we don't need Jalen Suggs to go out there and drop twenty points, but he can. And the times that he does, you know, he's still bringing it defensively. Um, and I think that he is he is definitely somebody that needs to be respected. Um, you know, Paul George was talking about some of the players that. Um, he he has seen improve and likes uh, when, when it comes to the the exact words was he likes being able to see players who who finally figures it out in the NBA that they finally figure out what that thing is that they're good at that they do that they can kind of um, stamp their game around and he, and he he mentions Jalen Suggs as one of those players that that finally has figured it out 
took him a couple of years to really do that because the conversations that people have in regards to Jalen Suggs today, completely different than last year, complete way different than the year before. And this is a debate that I that I have over and over and over with with Raptor fans online. If I can go back in time, I, I'm not I'm not trading. I'm not I'm I'm still picking. Like Jalen Suggs is still my pick. I am super happy. I'm glad Scotty Barnes did not fall. Like there's there's so many different elements to what Jalen Suggs brings that is not. You can't just look at his his points per game. Like his his game and what he adds, his value to this team is so much more than what you just see on on points per game. That he really helps impact the team in winning basketball. And I think that with Jalen Suggs playing, you know, you you like your odds because it, it takes off the load of, you know, Franz and, and Paolo and there's somebody that they can trust to be able to shoot the three point ball and he's our anchor on the defensive end. So it's it's I'm happy to see he's back. I'm glad that that you know that that little injury that he had is is finally kind of worn off a bit. I'm sure he still feels it a little bit, but we're different basketball we're a different basketball team with Jalen Suggs on the floor. Oh, for sure. And I think you talk about that Raptor situation and, and them debating whether we should have drafted, you know, Barnes and Sucks, whatever it may be. I still agree with you. I think the fact that he was a better fit in our roster no matter what. We needed guards at the time. He just fit better. It's as simple as that. So, um, and it's funny. We're going to play this weekend against the Raptors, Friday, tonight, and Sunday. So, unfortunately, right. Scotty Barnes is not playing. He's out with an injury. But Jalen Sucks will get to go back to uh, Toronto tonight and hopefully put on a show out there. Uh, for those Canadian fans that, that have talked too much, so much trash about him over the past couple of years. And I want to bring up one more name to you, and that is Jonathan Isaac. What are your thoughts on how he has looked the last really week or so? I was starting with the game against Charlotte, uh, which we won 101-89. But I'm seeing his stats right now, 11 points against Charlotte, 11 against the Knicks, 9 against the Pacers, 11 against Brooklyn, shooting the ball extremely well from three-point range. But most importantly... Two blocks in the last three games. And man, those blocks are insane blocks. So what are your thoughts on J.I. after the injury scare? We, we talked about a few weeks ago. He's come back better than ever, shooting the ball really well. But again, those highlight blocks that we're seeing every night, what does that do to our team, man? Because in the arena, I've been there for the home games. And I mean, it's electric. Once he gets those massive blocks on dunk, dunk attempts, like I think about the um, Toppin one against the Pacers. Like Toppin went at it hard. And G.I. just yeah. sent him back like nothing. And I forgot who it was yesterday uh, from Brooklyn that attempted a big dunk over him. And same thing, sent him right back. And the arena was going crazy. So what are your thoughts on J.I., how he has looked the last uh, week or so? Listen, he's he's your X factor. Jonathan Isaac doesn't do anything anymore that surprises you. This is what you expect from Jonathan Isaac. Paula Bancaro recently in on a podcast um, with Taylor Rooks talked about how Jonathan Isaac doesn't get talked about enough He's our X factor, and he's the best defensive player that he's ever seen. And Jonathan Isaac is that. Um, you know, we we've seen the analytical stats where they say that you know his defensive percentage per whatever possessions based on the minutes that he played, what whatever whatever those stats are, right? He is considered to be the best defensive player. Um, and one of the best defensive players in the NBA, but it's not just what he what shows up on the stats. Like if you're really watching these games, Jonathan Isaac is is altering shots just by his presence, like not not actually even like going out there and, and blocking. Just he already has this respect factor on the defensive end that people when they're driving to the basket and they see Jonathan Isaac, you know, they're they're thinking about those things. Right. Paula Bancaro in that same interview talked about how there's there's moments where, you know, he'll let a defender go pass by him because he knows Jonathan Isaac got got his back. And, you know, he he knows that Jonathan Isaac is, is going to be able to, you know, defend um, at a level where you you have trust in guys that they are going to be able to step up. So, you know, John, Jonathan Isaac, I'm I'm so grateful and I'm happy that we're at the point of the season where we're we're really talking postseason um basketball and and Jonathan Isaac is is healthy playing more and more minutes um and I think that the Magic have him in a a best position for him to be impactful for the team but yet still being careful where they're not putting too much on him right because 
the Magic are clearly a way better basketball team with Jonathan Isaac. And in comparison to, you know, either the beginning of the season or the end of last season where people really were giving up on Jonathan Isaac, saying, you know, it, it, can he can he even still, are we going to get the same Jonathan Isaac? Can he still play basketball? Does he care more about the outside stuff than he does, you know, the on-court stuff? And nobody talks about those stuff anymore. John, Jonathan Isaac is, is a baller, and Jonathan Isaac isn't getting booed. Like, people aren't talking smack about Jonathan Isaac anymore. Nobody is saying anything. All those whispers have gone away. It's been silent because Jonathan Isaac is backing it up. When he's on the floor, you know, his 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 average plus to minus is, is ridiculous. Jonathan Isaac is, is a hooper, and when you have Jalen Suggs and Jonathan Isaac leading your defensive efforts – Man, you're you you got a you got a really good uh, defensive basketball team, and that's that's something that we can hang our hat on because it's it's a pillar of of who we are, our identity, our culture, um, and it it really begins with them. Yeah, and I like the fact that he's also been playing again more in the fourth quarters, and we're seeing him a lot more now playing the five. So we saw him quite a bit this week playing the five with Paulo, Franz, uh, at times Jalen Suggs and Gary Harris. And that, to me, is just a, a really, really good lineup, man. I, I like Wendell. We know that. Uh, but I do like the look that just having J.I. out there with Franz and Paolo gives us. I think it's faster. I think it's more athletic. Um, the way he's been shooting the ball from three-point range, even better than Wendell at the moment. Um, but to your point, he, to me, is the X factor. We got to do what we can to keep him healthy. But at the same time, ramping him up for the playoffs. So if we can get him to 20 to 25 minutes a night heading into the playoffs, keep him healthy. I think, again, no team in the NBA wants to see J.I. in the playoffs. Uh, whether it's, you know, Giannis against him, whether it's whoever it may be that we throw him. Julius Randle, for sure, does not want to see him in the first round uh, playing defense on him. So it's exciting to have two guys in Jalen Suggs and J.I. that you can throw out there and say, hey, lock down that guy. Think about the Knicks. That's the most likely scenario that we that we have facing in the first round today, right? A month left in the season. A lot can still change. But if it stays as it is right now, you would have – Jalen Suggs going against Brunson, and then you have J.I. at times going against Randall. That's that's exciting, man. I know the Knicks have a great team, a lot of good shooting they added at the trade deadline, but I like those odds. I like us winning a couple of games at the very least against the Knicks. It will be a great experience for our young team to go into that crowd at MSG if that's what happens in games one and two. Um, but, man, it's lining up to be a really, really fun first round for whoever we face as long as we stay healthy. Yeah, and um, Jonathan Isaac also talked about how, you know, he, he was told by Coach Moles that he was going to play some extended minutes at the five and that, you know, he, he, he would be honest that he isn't fully comfortable there yet. Like, he's still, you know, trying to figure out that, that position now. And I, I love his attitude, man. I, I think that that's one of the things that um, you love the most about Jonathan Isaac is that he has his positive figure about him. He has the fact that he's willing to do whatever he has to you know, for the team, he's not, he's not fighting to be a starter. He doesn't, it doesn't matter to him. What matters is, is being a team. And when you talk about value, um, you know, this is, this is somebody that I cannot wait to see what the next contract looks like for him because the magic are not going to let Jonathan Isaac go. There's no value out there that would make sense that would be able to replace, you know, what Jonathan Isaac um, is to, to this team. So, um, the man, that's, that's a great thing. The magic have, have this, this arsenal in their back pocket that you can literally play Jonathan Isaac in so many different ways at the five, at the four, at the three, like you can really, uh, customize and fit. And this is, this is what our foundation is, right? Being able to have, you know, high character players that, that you, they're, they're not stuck in a specific box that you can literally, they can play two, three different positions. Anthony Black, you can play in one, two or three. Um, you know, Jalen Suggs, the one in the two, you know, everyone's being asked to do more. And I think that everyone is fully bought into this guy that has literally been leading the fort for us. Uh, I think has surprised many, many people exceeded expectations and was rightfully deserved a contract extension in Coach Mosley. So I want to get your thoughts on that because we just got the report from um, Wuj not not uh, about a couple of days ago when the report came out. But you know, signs an extension with the Orlando Magic. Um, what are your thoughts on the news? Coach Mosley is going to be here for the foreseeable future. 
um, that will take him through. Uh, it's a four-year contract extension that will take him through uh, the 2027-2028 season. I mean, I think you tweeted this out. I, I read it a few days ago saying, you know, one of the most exciting things that come with this news is the fact that we'll have continuity for the first time in forever, it feels like. I think since Stan Van Gundy was here, we haven't had a coach be here for such a long time. Um, yep. And that's the exciting part. So he'll be able to grow with Paolo, with Franz, with Jalen Suggs. So that core that we're building, he's their coach from day one in the NBA. And I think that's exciting for, for them to be able to say that and grow with him. He's getting better as a coach. He's not perfect. Let's be clear. There's things, some things has to clear out. I really, really hope this offseason we add a, a, an offensive coach, more of an offensive-minded uh, coach, because, again, I think that's a weakness for him at times, that creativity that we, we lack at times, um, like this past weekend when we scored 70 points on back-to-back -back games. Like It would have been nice to have, hey, someone else get creative out there and, and find different looks for Paolo, for Franz. So that's a weakness that I think can get addressed um, in the offseason with his coaching staff. But outside of that, man, you could not be happier for this guy. The fact that he came here, every single year the team has improved. They're playing hard every single night for this coach. And from our players to the away teams that come to town, the away players that come to visit, or that have played under him, like Luca and those guys, nothing but positive thing, things to say. And one thing that they all say is he's the ultimate player's coach. And guess what? This league, it's all about player coaches right now that's what players want to that's what they want to play for um so the fact that he's again young he can relate to these guys he played basketball in college he's still young he can get out there on the court with them so many things to like so if you ask me it was this deserved are you happy with the outcome of course why wouldn't you we went from 22 wins to 34 to potentially over 45 this season with two guys that are 21 years old at the moment that they're just they're just getting used to playing in the NBA. Imagine what this team can look like three, four years from now as they continue to evolve and, uh, and again, build a roster around him that fits his style. I still think that this roster is still not built to mostly standards. And by that, I mean Dallas. Like I think of Dallas days, they had shooters everywhere. I think that's kind of what he would love to have here while also having guys like J.I., Suggs, Anthony Black that can really lock it down. So I think we're getting to that point now where we're going to start building the roster around Paolo, Franz, Jalen, and Coach mostly. But imagine how great this team will be, again, one year from now, two years from now, with his leadership, the continuity, and guys that want to actually come to Orlando because they see the greatness happening and they want to play for him. So nothing but good things to say about the decision. Yeah, you know who you are. There were individuals out there that didn't believe that Coach Moles was going to get you know, to that second contract, right? They they compared him to, you know, Jock Vaughn, the guy that we're going to have in the very beginning until we get that next coach, right? The next coach that was going to get us to the playoffs. And, and again, this is somebody that came in and literally put his standard. He, he's a rookie coach, right? And and this is something that um that Brandon Kravitz had said on 96.9 The Game, where he talked about how we, we give flexibility to rookie players to allow them to grow. But when it comes to coaches, we, we don't have that same level of um, compassion or, or patience, right? Um, Coach Moses is not perfect. You, you, can, you can call things out in regards to his decision making, to his rotations, what, whatever it is. But let's be honest, no coach is going to be perfect. There's always going to be that one little thing, right? Um, and I think that when you look at the candidates that the Magic were initially looking at in that pool, um, so when we hired Coach Most back in 2021, names that were in consideration was Chauncey Billups, Jaron Collins, Mike D'Antoni, Willie Green, Becky Hammond, Penny Hardaway, Jason Kidd, Charles Lee, Terry Stotts, Ime Udaka, and Wes Unseld, like, Coach Mose was the perfect fit, the perfect hire. You know, Penny Hardaway was a name that a lot of people wanted because, you know, it's it's he he's such a a, a piece of the Orlando Magic fabric. Um, but man, I, I really, really love what Coach Mose has done and in this season, you know, again, exceeding the expectations. He, this is somebody that deserves he won't win it, um, but definitely deserves some level of recognition nomination some level of votes for coach of the year um because he what he's been able to do with his team deserves to be applauded and this is all without you know an associate head coach that can really drive you know the offensive um you know 
pillar that that we're missing because we know that he got the defense down packed. Like he got that. He got that easy with his eyes closed behind his back. You know, he pushes that. Um, but man, ima- imagine being able to add somebody like Terry Stotts as your associate head coach right next to you know uh, Coach Mos. I-, I think that that would be beautiful. That would be amazing. And I think that I love the fact that they didn't rush that hire either. Um, I like the fact that they're w- they waited until the season to kind of roll out, and maybe they won't hire anyone. Maybe they'll they'll just you know promote you know coaches from within their um their their coaching team now we we have a really good coaching staff so who knows but man i i i love 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 that you know we we made that extension happen it's well deserved and the players they they couldn't be even more happier for him and that, that's the best part right like all the players are happy for him um again the front office is happy with him ownership has to be happy with him so again nothing but good things to say congrats to coach Mose. again really really well deserved uh recognition for him and again, now it's time to show us what he's got, man. Again, we have a month left in the season. Uh, playoffs, again, it feels weird. It's our first time since we launched this podcast that we're truly just prepping for the playoffs. It feels weird. Like, we're not prepping for the draft. We're not prepping for, you know, tank a ton. We don't care about that right now. We're legitimately, like, prepping for the playoffs. I don't know what to do myself. I'm like, I'm looking at seating every night. And who's playing? Are the Knicks playing? Is Philly playing? Like, I, it's again, it's surreal. We kind of went through this back in 1920 when we made the playoffs, but even then it was different. Like it was, yeah. a, it was a late season push, uh, kind of came out of nowhere, and it was a team that had a ceiling. This team, again, we know for a fact this is only you know part one of what's to come in years to come. Yeah. So uh, kudos to Coach Most, man. Um, now. Something interesting, it was like a random report that came out of nowhere, but Clay Thompson, the Orlando Magic, there was some connection out um, in the media. I believe this was from Mark Stein. Are you able to confirm that? Was it Mark Stein? I believe it was. It Maybe. was, I believe so. I can get you the name. Hold up. I'll look okay, it up while you, while you report it. That. So um, so the report came out saying that the Orlando Magic showed interest in Clay Thompson at the trade deadline. Um, and the report read, Orlando has had some interest in trading for Golden State Clays Thompson prior to the trade line. Per people familiar with the matter, Thompson will be a free agent this off season. And the Magic, um, as we all know, will have money to spend. Um, so I guess the first thing would be, do you believe that report? Because there, there's always a level of, of belief, right? We we always hear the consistent, oh, the Magic don't leak anything. All right. So... Um, on a scale of one to ten, like, are how how where do you fall on the believable spectrum? Um, and then is that is that something that you would want? Would you welcome somebody that roots for the Golden State Warriors as your West Coast basketball team? Um, you've seen a lot of Clay Thompson basketball. Do you see there being a fit with Clay in Orlando? And do you see him being thirty four years of age? signing a four-year contract to where he can really give us good quality basketball in the next four years? So it's a, it's a tough question, right? Because the 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 guy that watches the Warriors, uh, Rufus Steph, has seen Klay Thompson hit big shot after big shot. It's like, man, like this guy in Orlando would be incredible. Also think about the fact that he would move to Orlando and now pay so many taxes like he pays in California. Like that would be a massive plus for him also. But the reality is I'm having a hard time understanding why he would leave the Warriors. He's got a legacy built there. He loves playing there. He loves Steph. Unless things are going crazy behind the scenes that we don't know about, I truly don't see that core of Clay, Steph, Draymond Green breaking up. Um, I think they will do whatever they can to keep it together as much as possible. If not, let those guys retire in their own terms because they've earned the right to do so. They've won four rings together. That's my thoughts there. Now, this report, I cannot find the writer, but I do know it's a New York... uh, New York uh, beat writer that, that came up with this article. He's a Knicks, uh, Knicks beat writer, so I just can't think of the name. But um, he's talking about the Magic pursuing him at the trade deadline. And I really don't see what it was the Magic were going to be offering to the Warriors to get him, unless it was a package around maybe Markel Fultz, Wendell Carter, because I know they need a big guy, and maybe picks. I don't know. So that's what makes it a little bit kind of challenging for me to understand what it was we we're going to offer for him if in reality we were trying to acquire him. And then again, why would the Warriors trade him in the middle of the season? That would that would not make any sense to me. So I would tell you, belief factor, 
I'm 40, 60, 40% of me believes it, believes it, 60% doesn't, just because, again, I don't see it for either team. The Magic have been very clear. They don't want to, you know, rock the boat too much this season. They want to really explore and know what they have. And the Warriors, I don't think they're ready to break up that core just yet. So that's where I stand on that. What about you? Do you think there's any chance that that was real and that we should actually pursue him in free agency? Um, I, I I love reading these reports and kind of dissecting the words that they utilize, right? Because when you show interest, like what is what is the definition of shown interest? Does shown interest even constitute a conversation? Like what what is really shown interest? Is it you know I'm I'm hungry. What what should we eat today? Should we eat you know TGI Fridays? Should we eat you know? Ale house like what is that showing interest like what what is what is that level and and i think that a lot of times when it comes to these reports <clears throat> a lot of it is is speculation but it's also like speculation that makes sense clay thompson is a shooter magic needs shooting so it that to me makes makes sense like you can make that report and nobody is going to deny that report you know it's not like the uh jeff woman is going to say i never said that no one's going to deny that report so do i believe that i'm 50 50 on believing it truthfully I, I i really don't i don't care i like the fact that we're in those conversations i like the fact that we're connecting the magic to a big name player like clay thompson is he the clay thompson that you know we we would see in golden state who knows man you're taking a player from the west coast to the east coast and and this is someone that can still shoot lights out i guess to me it would all depend on you know the the contract does the money make sense um in doing a little research i i also read articles where you know execs around the league don't foresee him going anywhere and just staying with golden state and signing you know a hundred hundred and twenty million dollar contract to stay in golden state and you know, honestly, I I see that happening. Clay Thompson's playing a reserve role, so he's getting paid good money to stay where he's at, to stay with people he's familiar with, to come off the bench, um, and still provide a lot of value. I I think it makes sense, man. He's thirty four years old, still, you know, dealing with nagging injuries, and and you know, uh, it's it's a safe bet for him to stay, you know, in Golden State, and you know, his post career. You know, I'm I'm sure that there's still going to be a lot of work to be done with him and the Warriors in in some capacity. So I don't I don't think he ends up leaving. They're going to retire his jersey. They're going to build that man a statue and and call it a day. I think so too, man. And again, if he does come to Orlando, trust me, we'll receive him here in Orlando with open arms. I just don't know if he's the one guy you want to you know bring at this moment. He's been dealing with injuries a lot the last couple of years. The contract will not be team friendly, in my opinion. I think that he's going to want to get paid one more time. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're hoping to get him to be your starting shooting guard, I think those days are behind him. Even now in Golden State, he's being brought off the bench some games. And he's even talked about how he kind of idolizes Manu Ginobili as, as that kind of next tier player that he wants to kind of emulate because he's getting older. Or even Ray Allen, who transitioned from being a starting shooting guard to then being an off the bench guy for the Miami Heat when they won that ring. Uh, back in 2012, I want to say. Um, so he's already thinking about coming off the bench. So if he's okay doing that in Orlando, and that's the expectation, you're a six-man going forward, by all means. But as Magic fans, I think we want a starting two. That's kind of what we're going for. Clay Thompson may not be that guy. But again, as a six-man or, or off-the-bench guy, all day long. Yeah, so um, we we've heard a lot of people that were for it, against it. Um, regardless of what it is, uh, you like to hear the magic connected because this is what confirms to us. This is what we hear. This is what we're able to view as a magic looking to improve the roster in any way that they can. Um, and I think that this is, this is a good step for it. Um, and it allows us to be able to be a little more futuristic with, with our thinking. We have a lot to be excited for right now with the postseason, but man, who knows what what our options are really going to be once the Magic have an opportunity to really highlight what this team um, is like on a national level in a playoff capacity? Um, because again, there, there's no better marketing for any team for free agency than the playoffs. So we'll see what ends up happening. Um, so out the week ahead, we have tonight against Toronto, Sunday against Toronto, uh, first game. Uh, so today's going to be in Toronto. Uh, Sunday will be at home against Toronto. And then Tuesday 
Uh, we got Charlotte Thursday against New Orleans. When you look at these upcoming games, uh, what are your predictions? Um, ideally, we go three and one. Uh, I think the Pelicans have been playing really, really well as of late. Um, they're going to be a tough out. However, we are playing at home. So I like our chances facing them at home. Um, ideally, you beat Toronto twice. You beat Charlotte. So you got to take care of business, right? Beat those teams you're supposed to be. New Orleans, up in the air. So I'm going to go three and one. Um, and don't forget, starting Sunday, we're starting an eight-game homestand, the, the longest of the season. So we're here pretty much the Let's rest go. of the month. Uh, this is our time, man. we got to build some nice cushion in the, in the Eastern Conference. So far, just for those that are keeping track, um, the Magic currently, again, are sitting in the fifth seed. The Knicks are playing right now. So they're playing Portland. I'm going to assume they're going to win that game. So we're going to be a game behind the Knicks in the, in the standings for the fourth seed. We have the fifth. Sixth today is Indiana. They're a game and a half behind us. Seventh is Philadelphia, two games behind us. And eighth is the Miami Heat, currently two and a half games behind us. So big week for us to, again, continue to get some some ground there in the Eastern Conference, get some nice buffer. Because, again, you want to win. Every game matters now. We're down to the final stretch here of the season. Uh, and, again, we ideally want to be top six in the East. That's my ultimate goal. I know people want to get top four. But if you get me top, top six this season – that would be incredible for us. I'll take so it. Three and one this week. Yeah, and then just kind of kind of thinking ahead. So the Knicks, their next four games, they got the Kings, they got the Warriors, they got the Nuggets, and then Brooklyn. So their next three out of the four games, they're not they're not going to be the easiest game for New York. I'm not sure what their what their roster is really looking like. I'm not sure when OG is planning to come back, but I know they're still dealing with their injuries. So this this next four games are really going to be key. It's going to be important for us to really come out, show our dominance, take advantage of of these Toronto games and that Charlotte game um, to get us um, to push because we we want to be closer to that four seed than we do the six seed. I know we'll be happy with six seed, but if we can. If we can take advantage of this this home stretch that we have, um, and really solidify home court presence for the playoffs, it would be ridiculous, and it would be a very very welcome back to the playoff ceremony at, at home fashion for the Orlando Magic. So I'm expecting for the Magic to go out do work, especially if we're gonna have our our whole roster. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and go on a limb and say four. No, I think we go on a streak. I love it. I love it. If that's the case, then I, I pretty I feel pretty confident that we'll be in the fourth seat again by the time that we record next week. So I'm crossing my fingers that we go four and zero, and we are here celebrating the fact that we are fourth again. By the way, Knicks fans talk so much trash. Yeah, they do. After they beat us and they made, they mocked the whole play the song thing, just to go <laughs> and drop seventy three points the next night against Philadelphia. So hey. Hope they yeah, enjoy who, that. <laughs> who was it? Who was it? it? Was it was Josh Hart that was talking about? It. He he was he was motivated to get the win against the Magic because he didn't want to hear the Orlando Magic and a bunch of cows <laughs> dancing on TikTok. So I I hope that the the Magic PR team or or their social marketing team I hope they remember that. And the next time we beat the Knicks, um, do we play the Knicks again? I don't I don't even know. We don't unfortunately uh, in the playoffs hopefully. All right, so maybe. So the next time that we play the Knicks, I hope they remember and they, they make sure that we have some dancing cows for them in, in, our, <laughs> in our winning post. Um, on that note, man, it, it's a wrap. We'll see what that magic end up looking like this, this past week. Please don't forget, man, we got a ton of, a ton of content out there. Uh, visit OrlandoMagicHQ.com for all our up-to-date recent articles. We have spaces going down in on Twitter after every single game, we got, you know, Stanley and, and Bryce and Skinny that do an awesome, awesome job leading that. Um, and then check out our YouTube. BJ does a really good job dropping videos and, and keeping us up to date. And then interact with us on social media, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and, and talk who's with us. On that note, man, it, it's a wrap. I appreciate everyone for listening. Um, check out our podcast, check out Stephen Cameron, the close up and check out, uh, Brandon Kravitz's new podcast on the believe platform, uh, for zone heads. This episode is brought to you by bet online. Catch you guys next week. 
For all the latest magic news and updates, visit OrlandoMagicHQ.com and follow us on Instagram at OrlandoMagicHQ and on Twitter at OMagicHQ. Also, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe and leave a five-star review on your favorite listening platform.